Shalom guys, welcome back to another episode here. I just have your ministry with Casa de Israel Jedi. Thank you again for being here. Like I always say, if you like the content that we're putting up in our channel, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. Uh, please share with any youth that is interested in uh, listening to the word of Elohim, its truth, and its context. So with that being said, let's get started with this week's Torah portion. So... Before we do the Torah portion, we're going to do a Torah blessing like we always do. Uh, so it says, uh, Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has ordered us to study the words of your Torah. Please, Adonai, that the words of your Torah are pleasant to our mouth and to the mouth of your people, the house of Israel, that our children and the children of our children, the house of Israel, are, are knowers and students of your Torah for its essence. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches his, the Torah to his people of Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all the nations and has given us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen. So, this week's Torah portion is Tetzavet, right? And so, which means... You are to order, or you, you're going to order, right? And so, last week, we, in, in Torah portion, Teruma, we understood about the importance of understanding what the tabernacle is, right? What the temple is, right? The, the importance of studying the house of Elohim, right? Because in the next 16 chapters, and the book of Leviticus, right? And the book of Numbers, we start to understand the structure of Elohim's kingdom, right? And so uh, we hear a lot about the, in, in the New Testament of that the Torah was the image of what was there to come, right? Or that Yeshua or the feast were the image of what was there to come, right? And so uh, all these expressions uh, are said and are, are being brought up for a reason, okay? And so, we understood that the tabernacle represents God's house. We understood that the, that the tabernacle is a physical representation uh, of how God wants us to understand the protocol of him dwelling among us, right? And so we understood that it all starts from inside, right? So from the heart. So the intention of understanding God's house is going to help you get to know God a little more and deeper. Because in the next Torah portions, we're going to understand the protocol of how God wants his kingdom to work, right? And so... Last week, we uh, saw the offering for the tabernacle, right? The free will offering of the heart to build the tabernacle. Uh, we saw the ark, right? The table of showbread, the lamb stamp, um, the tabernacle itself, the altar and the burnt offering. Uh, we also saw the courtyard, right? And how everything was going to be built. This week, uh, we get into more of uh, the lighting of the menorah. Right, and we get into the priestly garments and how they were going to look, right? How were they going to represent Elohim? How the priests and how they would dress was gonna mirror Elohim, right? And so, uh, something very cool and, and, and interesting that I learned last week is that something as simple as like when I, ha I have a baby, right? He's a year and six months, right? And I'm about to have another one. And so um, when we teach our, ki our children is we teach them, you know, if we want to teach them what's a cat, we show them an image of a cat. We show them, you know, a little toy of a cat or a cow, right? Or a horse. And so we, a car, we show them this physical um, representations of what you want them to learn, right? So you have a car, you tell them, car right my son is obsessed with cars now and so you show him a car and he knows car right so that physical representation teaches him something right and it can help him uh, learn 
what a car is, right? And so what's interesting about it is that that physical representation doesn't go away the moment that he grows up, right? The moment that he grows up, the car doesn't disappear. The car still exists. He just knows what a car is. And he then understands the function of a car. And then he learns how to drive a car. And then he learns the rules of how to drive the car in the streets, etc., etc., etc. But we need physical things, physical representations to understand how we're going to work and move around in life itself, right? When you go to work, there's a structure. Yeah? You cannot go to work and do whatever you want. There's a structure there that you have to follow in school, you know? So you have to understand that the same concept Elohim wants to teach his people. And you might say, well, why can't God just create or make us perfect and make us do exactly what he wants us to do? Well, he could do that, but then that'll mean that you wouldn't have free will. That'll mean that some people might say, oh, why is God so controlling and why is he making me do these things, etc., 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 right? So he gives us a structure that he wants, and then he gives us the option to follow it or not. If you follow it, you honor him. If you don't follow it, you don't honor him. Because this is the way he wants to be represented. Right? Many people and in religious systems have taught you that the Bible is what you want it to be. The Bible is not what you want it to be. The Bible is what God wants it to be. Right? The, the, the structure that is in the Bible is for you to apply yourself to God's order not for God's order to apply to you, okay? So, like I said, we understood a couple elements from the tabernacle last week. This week, we're going to understand uh, the priestly garments, and we're going to talk a, lot, a little bit about that, right? Uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time, so please bear with me. So, like I always do, uh, I'm going to torture you a little bit with my practice of Hebrew, so please don't kill me. It says, Wa'ata titsave it bene Yisrael wa yi chechu elecha shemen sa'it sach chatit lama or lecha alot ner. Tamid, right? Now, English, please, Alexander. Yes. You shall charge the sons of Israel that they bring you clear oil of the beaten uh, oil, olives for the lighting to make the lamp burn continually uh, in the tent of meeting outside, outside the veil, uh, which is before the testimony. Aaron and his son shall keep it in order from the evening to the morning before the Lord. And it shall be a perpetual statue throughout their generations for the sons of Israel. Perpetual means forever. And so if we believe in a God that doesn't change, perpetual is perpetual. And then chapter 28 gets into the priestly garments. It says, bring near to yourself Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the sons of Israel to minister as priests to me, Aaron and Nadab and Habiahud, Eliasar, Itamar, Aaron's sons. You shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all the skillful persons who have endowed with the spirit of wisdom that they make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may uh, minister as priest to me, right? These are the garments which they shall make a, a breast piece and an ephod, a robe, a tunic, um, checker work, a turban, a uh, sash, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron's, your brother and his sons, that they, he may minister as priest to me. Right, 
They shall take the gold and the blue and the purple and the scarlet material and the fine linen. They shall also make the ephod of gold, a blue and purple scarlet material and fine twisted linen, the work of skillful workmen. It shall have two shoulder pieces, join its two ends, that it may be enjoined. The skillfully woven band, which is on it, shall be like a workmanship of the same material, of gold and blue and purple and scarlet material, fine and twisted, skillfully woven band, which is on it. It should be. You shall take two onyx stones and engrave them the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on the one stone and the name of the remaining six on the other stone according to their birth. Azure is engraved signet. You shall engrave the two stones according to the names of the sons of Israel, and you shall set them in filigree sittings of gold. Right? You shall put the two stones on the shoulder pieces of four as a stone memorial for the sons of Israel, and Aaron shall bear their name before the Lord on his two shoulders for the for a memorial. You shall make figurine settings of gold and two chains of pure gold. And you shall make them a twisted uh, cordage work, and you shall put the corded chains on the filigree settings, settings, and you shall make a breast piece of judgment, the work of a skillful worker, like the work of a foil. You shall make it of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet material, and fine, fine twisted linen. You shall make it. It shall be a square folded double. A span in length and a span in width. You shall mount it four rows of stone, and the first row shall be. You shall mount in four rows and the st of stones, and the first row shall be row of ruby, uh, topaz, and emerald, and the second row, turquoise and sapphire and diamond. And the third row, jacinth and agate, and a myth and the fourth row a burrow and an onyx as uh, jasper they shall be set in gold figuring the stone shall be according to the names of the sons of israel 12 according to their names they shall be like the engravings of a seal each according to this or his name for the 12 tribes you shall make a breast piece chain of twisted cordage work and pure gold you shall make a breast piece two rings gold and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breast piece. You shall two, put two cords of the gold on the rings and the ends of the breast piece and you shall put two other ends uh, of the two cords of the fingering settings and put them on the shoulders of the piece of the effort at the front of it. And you shall make two rings of gold shall place them on the two ends. Uh, of the breast piece on the edge of it, which is towards the inner side of the f uh, And you shall make two rings of gold and put them on the bottom of the two shoulder pieces of the f Front of it, it close to the place where it is enjoined above the skillfully woven band of the f They shall bind a breast piece by the, its rings to the rings of the f and the blue cord, so it will be skillful woven band of the f that they Breast piece will not come loose from the effort. Aaron shall carry the names of the sons of Israel in the breast piece of judgment over his heart when he enters the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. You shall put in the breast piece of judgment, the Urim and the Dumim, and they shall be over Aaron's heart. When he goes before the Lord, and Aaron shall carry the judgment of the sons of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually, he shall make a robe of the blue. There shall be an opening over the top and the middle of it. Around it, an opening shall be a binding of wooden work, like opening of a cord of mail, so that it will be, so that it will not be torn. You shall make it, and you shall make its hem. Permigrates of blue and purple, and scarlet material all around its hem, and bells of gold between them and all around. A golden bell, promulgate a golden bell, promulgate around him of the robe. It shall be on Aaron, 
and he ministers and he and it thinking shall be heard when it enters the leaves the holy place before the lord so that he will not die all right you shall also make a plate pure gold and shall engrave on it the engraving of a seal holy to the lord okay now i have read a lot i hope you're still watching and are not bored with the word of Elohim. But with that being said, being said, we're going to keep reading a little bit of information from this book just because I don't know everything and it's good to resort to resources that help us understand some things, right? So it says here, Ephod, right? We talked about the Ephod. If you were paying attention, I read about the Ephod, right? It's verse 6 says, The description portrays Ephod as rather expensive piece of clothing. Given the material which it consists, a similar garment appears to be mentioned in an old Assyrian text, right? So now, like we always see in ancient Near Eastern context uh, uh, information, there's always a um, comparison, right? Why is there a comparison? Because we need to understand context and history, right? Things in the Bible didn't just happen, right? There's a reason, there's a purpose, remember? car right that image represents that that is a car and you're trying to teach your son that this is a car and then eventually you're going to turn teach your son how a car works and how he can operate in the car okay so this is exactly what ancient Near Eastern context topographical geographical um all these contexts help you understand why and how uh a few documents from the ogarit uh, and there is some hint that these garments were also costly, though evidence is con inconclusive. Based on the biblical account, the fall was like an apron that wrapped around the body of the waist and down. And depiction of the similar garments on the figures that appears to be royal and divine and have been preserved in artistic representation from a new kingdom, Egypt. These garments include shoulder straps fastened to the main piece by gems similar to fashion to the priestly foot. Their purpose is unclear as it is in connection to the Israelites' counterpart, part, right? And so, um, the priestly garments are understood to be something uh, beautiful, like the high priest itself, right? Now, why is the high priest given so much in, uh, importance here, right? Because the high priest uh, is the only one chosen to enter the Holy of Holies to mediate, right? And, and, and connect the people to Elohim, right? And so the people of Israel are chosen as a nation to be priest, right? But Elohim chose Aaron as the high priest. Now, if we go back in the story, right? If we have been following our videos, we have been talking about, in the beginning, we talked about creation, Right and how everything was created perfectly, right? And Elohim gave him gave man creation perfectly, and so he said, "I'll give you this that I have put together in order, and I want you to maintain it. All you have to do is honor me, right, and take care of what I have created." Okay, and so men didn't do that, right? And so we saw a continuation of good men, right? The get men's of Elohim maintaining their. Uh, Loyalty to God, right? and there was men that didn't, and we follow that trajectory all the way down to Egypt, right? Where Joseph was misrepresented by his brothers, but because he honored Elohim and followed Him, right, he was held justly, and he was put second in command to Pharaoh, which represented God on Egypt and the world, right, and so. Then the people of Israel get enslaved by Egypt because, if we remember, Joseph, right, made everybody sell everything they had to Egypt, right? So Israel was enslaved to Egypt, right? And then Elohim redeems them, right? So from Genesis, creation, perfect, this chaos, right, decay, right? And then through the Red Sea, right? Just like in the beginning, right? They were in chaos, right? In the beginning, there was chaos, right? The waters, right? And then 
boom, Elohim created everything and put everything to order. So now, chaos, 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 chaos. They cross the Red Sea, chaos, and Elohim controls it. Separates the waters, right? Remember? Genesis, he separates this, he separates the water. Now, Israel becomes a new creation again. Now that Israel is new, they have been redeemed, they're giving the instruction of how they were going to minister creation and represent Elohim correctly. Okay? Follow me? I hope I did a good job explaining that. So, with that being said, the high priest is the one that represents Adam. But if we remember to, Moses is told by Elohim that he will be God to the people and Aaron will be the prophet. So Moses right now is the one speaking to Elohim, right? And Moses is the one giving the order to tell Aaron and the priests of how things are going to work. Okay? Now, why is this so important? Right? Why is the high priest so important? Why is the tabernacle so important, right? Alex, why are we talking about the tabernacle? Understand something. This is the order of Elohim. The tabernacle represents the Garden of Eden. The high priest represents Adam in the Garden of Eden. Adam had direct connection with Elohim. Now, I'm not going to complicate it too much for you guys. Just understand something. The high priest is the only one that can connect the people to Elohim directly. He was the only one that can go into the Holy of Holies, right? Once a year in Yom Kippur, right? And so here he is given the priestly garments of honor, right? He was supposed to carry Israel on his shoulders, right? He was supposed to have Elohim's name in his gold plated in his in his forehead, in his um, uh, turban, right? Where it says... Holiness to Elohim, to God, to yod heh bav right? And so, all of this imagery, right? Remember, the tabernacle, the priests, these uh, small representations teach you something, right? Uh, in the beginning of the video, I said that uh, a phrase, and I don't know if I translated it correctly in English, um, but... Is, 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 is a phrase that is used that the images or the things that came before Yeshua were images of the things to come, right? I hope I'm tra translating that correctly, right? So the things that were happening, right? The Torah, right? The tabernacle, all of these were images for the times to come, right? And so many people interpret these things as to say that they were just images of now that Yeshua is the one that is fulfilling everything. No, it's not that. Yeshua is fulfilling the roles of a high priest. Yeshua fulfilled the roles of a high priest. He's going to fulfill the roles of a king, right? And so the only way we understand the roles that Yeshua is fulfilling is understanding the tabernacle, understanding the Torah and its order, right? Understand something. These 20 minutes that I've been talking, right? Understand something. If you can, listen, I might not have all the information in the world. And I might not have the biggest revelation in the world. Understand this. Understanding the order and the structure. It might be tedious, right? I don't know if I'm saying that right either. But it might be rigorous to read the the details of the tabernacle and how is it constructed, right? The altar, right? The garments, right? But all of this splendor had a reasoning for it, okay? When the world saw the splendor of the high priest, when the people of Israel saw the splendor of the high priest, it represented Elohim and the responsibility that he carried on his shoulders, right, was so important. Right, and so to close out, the high priest represented the people in front of Elohim, right? And so Yeshua is who represented us in the heavenly temple or the heavenly tabernacle, right? Understanding that 
what manifested in the physical, right? Just like the car toy that you were showing your kids, right? This car toy is the tabernacle physically that we're starting to study here in the book of Exodus, right? It's the physical car, right? The spiritual is understanding what the car looks like. And I, and I hope I'm explaining that correctly, right? And so the, the car is the physical, understanding what the car's function and what the car is without looking at the car is the spiritual part, okay? All right, so Elohim gave us this, what is in the spiritual realm. He gave us a physical representation so we can understand how it works, right? So understanding this structure, we understand how Yeshua mediates for us. And understanding this structure, we understand how we approach God, right? And understanding this structure, we understand how m us men, right? Especially men who are called to be the priests of the house, right? And how women can dictate the men that will direct their houses, right? If you're going to call yourself a priest, if you're going to call yourself, like I said last week, a temple of God, you have to mirror the blueprint that Elohim has given. The splendor that the high priest was given this week is a splendor that is not just something that you wear. It's something that you not only earn, but you have to carry with honor and respect. With that being said, I'm going to close out with this right here. Why? Do we study the tabernacle? This is going to be probably the question that we are going to keep answering these last couple, this next couple of weeks, okay? A lot of chapters on the tabernacle. Read, please. For you, son of man, describe the house of Israel, the temple, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and that they shall measure the plan. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement. It exists and its entrances. That is, this is whole design. And make known to them as well as its statutes and its whole design and all its laws. And write it down on their site so that they may observe all these laws, all these statutes, and, and carry them out. This is the law of the temple. The whole territory on the top of the mountain all around shall be mostly holy. Behold, this is the law of of the temple. Elohim is trying to take us back to the beginning. To the Garden of Eden. The tabernacle. In the book of Exodus. right, The next couple chapters. When you connect Genesis 1. To Exodus 40. Right. Is a direct connection. And going back to the garden. The blueprint to how to we go back to Elohim's presence. The blueprint to how we connect to Elohim is in these books. If we take the time to study the blueprints, we will learn and be ashamed of our iniquities, like he says. But we will also get to know Elohim's heart and Elohim's order. And we will also get to know our Messiah. And where his loyalty stood. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Shabbat and Shabbat Shalom. Read up. Thank you.